So now on to our dinosaur of the day, Myasaura, whose name means good mother reptile. Myasaur was a hadrosaur, duck-billed dinosaur, that lived in Montana in the late Cretaceous, and the first fossils were found in 1978, and the genus was named in 1979. Marion Branvold and her son David Trexler found quote-unquote egg mountain, as it's known now, which is a nesting site in Montana. Marion found the eggs, and a woman named Lori Trexler found the holotype. She found a Myasaur skull, and it was Jack Horner and Robert Makala who described the holotype. The species name is Myasaurus pebosaurum, and the name is based on finding these nests with eggs and embryos and young dinosaurs, which was evidence that Myasaura fed its young in the nest, and it was the first evidence of a dinosaur doing so. Maya was a goddess in Greek mythology, and Jack Horner used the feminine form of the word Sora to emphasize this motherliness. Most dinosaurs, you notice, would have the male-oriented name. It ends in Saurus. Yeah, that is a pretty nice touch. And the first couple times I read it, I thought I might have been looking at a clad or something where, you know, like you have ornithischia, but yeah, it's just the feminine form that's really cool. The fossils were found on John and James Peebles land, so that's why the species type is named after them. And hundreds of Myasaur fossils have been found, actually over 200 specimens of all ages, which is great for studying this species. Other dinosaurs that lived in the area at the same time included Trudonid, the Hypsilophodont orodromius, the Dromaeosaurid bambi raptor, and another hadrosaur named Hippocrosaurus. It's basically a herd of Myasaurus that was found, and they were all buried under volcanic ash. The herds may have been as large as 10,000 Myasaurus. And because of this, Myasaurus is one of the few dinosaurs where there's solid proof of dinosaurs living in herds. Aside from living in herds, they had some muscular tails, and that was their only way to defend themselves. Because they were such a large herd, they may have migrated seasonally to find more food. Or other theories is that maybe during the year, they lived in slightly smaller groups, and then they all came together once a year for the nesting. So the area where the eggs were found is now known as Egg Mountain in the Two Medicine Formation in Montana. The nesting site, as I said, is communal. These nests were really close together, kind of similar to what modern seabirds do. There was about 23 feet or 7 meters in between nests, which is about the length of an adult Myasaura. The eggs were about the size of ostrich eggs, and nests had 30 to 40 eggs in them, and laid in a circular or spiral pattern. Myasaura was probably too heavy to sit on its nest, so it incubated its eggs using rotting vegetation. It would put the vegetation in the nest instead of sitting on top, and as the vegetation rotted, it would emit heat. When the eggs hatched, the baby Myasaur did not have fully developed legs, so probably couldn't walk. We'll get into a little more of that in a minute. They had partly worn teeth, so adults probably brought food to them, at least in the first few months to a year. In 1996, a new study was published that compared newly hatched birds and crocodilians to dinosaur embryos and hatchlings, and that found that the hip bone development was more important than leg bone development. So... Myasaura's non-developed leg bones didn't necessarily indicate a lack of mobility. The study concluded that baby Myasaura was more precocial or advanced than previously thought and may not have needed as much parental care. But in 2001, Jack Horner studied the growth rates and other developmental differences between Trudon, Orodromius, and Myasaura and found that Trudon and Orodromius were precocial while Myasaura needed a lot more care. Dr. Paul L. Els hypothesized that Myasaura produced crop milk, which is how some modern birds, like pigeons, flamingos, they produce a fatty liquid for their babies. Crop milk would have had antibodies, fat, protein, etc., things needed to help grow. And he wrote an article called Dinosaur Lactation about crop milk based on the relationship between dinosaurs and birds. He claimed that Myasaura probably produced crop milk because the babies may not have been able to break down plants and that this fortified milk substance may have been what helped the babies grow quickly. However, one article that kind of talks about this theory and why it might not work is that the way that birds secrete their crop milk is different. So pigeons have this crop organ, but emperor penguins have it come from the lining of their esophagus. And also crocodilians, which are the closest living relatives to dinosaurs other than birds, do not have this ability. So between the two, one, crocodilians not being able to do it and birds seeming to have evolved it in different ways and not all birds can do this, it seems unlikely that Myasaura could do this. 
Jack Horner found that there were a bunch of different nests layered on top of one another in Egg Mountain, so Myasaur probably went to the same site over multiple breeding seasons. Again, like modern seabirds, they might have lived in smaller groups, but then once a year came to these areas to raise their young, and their young grew very rapidly. In the first year, babies grew from 16 inches or 41 centimeters to 58 inches or 147 centimeters, and then they left the nest. And this rapid growth may mean that they were warm-blooded. The babies looked very different from adults. They had larger eyes and a shorter snout were much cuter, which you see in animals today who need their parents in order to survive when they're young. Juveniles under four years walked on two legs, but adults walked on four legs. Their front legs were much shorter than their hind legs, so possibly when Myasaur ran, it ran on its back legs and used its tail for balance. In 2001, paleontologist David Dilk said Myasaur may have changed its posture as it grew older based on muscle scars that showed young Myasaur ran on two legs and walked on four legs when it got bigger. Jorge Kubo, Holly Woodward, Elm Wolf, and Jack Horner reported that after cutting open two bones, one of a one-year-old Myasaur and one of a four-year-old, they found that the bone growth showed the one-year-old was similar to bipedal animals and the four-year-old was similar to quadrupedal animals. The bones had these rinds of extra bone that quickly grew over its outer surfaces, which showed a response to strain. So these bones actually were of their right fibula in both cases, and in both cases, these dinosaurs probably broke it, and then the extra bone grew in response to the strain on their tibias. But then it, what's interesting is how, depending on the age of the animal, it grew a little bit differently. So this leads to speculation on whether or not there are too many different types of named dinosaurs and whether some of them may actually just be juveniles of others, which we covered a lot in our interview with Jack Horner. An adult Myasaurus was about 30 feet or 9 meters long. It was about 6 to 8 feet or 2 to 2.5 meters tall and weighed 3 to 4 tons. It had a flat beak, a thick nose, and a spiky crest in front of its eyes that males possibly used to fight each other to impress females and attract mates. It had four fingers on its hands and feet had hoof-like claws. It had a toothless beak and cheeks to hold in its food. And an adult Myasaurus probably ate around 200 pounds of food per day, possibly leaves and seeds. Myasaurus coprolites from Wyoming show that they also ate lots of wood. As of 1985, Myasaurus is the state fossil of Montana. And this, I wonder if it's because also in 1985, astronaut Lauren Acton went on an eight-day mission called Space Lab 2 and took with him a piece of Myasaur bone and Myasaur eggshell into space. And you can see these now in the Museum of the Rockies in Montana. Myasaur is in another piece of media. In 2010, there was an animated Japanese film that was based on a book called You Are Yumaso, where a Myasaur raises a baby T-Rex. Myasaur is a hadrosaur. It's not the largest hadrosaur. It's most closely related to Brachylophosaurus, which is known as the quote-unquote dinosaur mummy, because in 2000, a subadult named Leonardo was found, and it was a partially mummified skeleton. Myasaur is a saurolophine hadrosaur, because the crest on its snout is solid. And we talked a bit about this in a couple episodes, like episode 31, Corythosaurus. There are two subfamilies of hadrosaurs. There's the lambiosaurines, which have hollow crests, and the saurolophines with solid crests, or no crests. And until recently, saurolophines were known as hadrosaurinae, but then it was found that the genus Hadrosaurus was more primitive, so the subfamily was renamed to saurolophinae. 